What's cracking, fam? T Money down in the dungeon. Uh, it's been a good week since I've done a little over a week actually since I've done an update. It feels like a long time, um, but a lot of shit went hap. Uh, you know, just a lot of stuff has gone on in the last week and a half. Um, some personal stuff, and then just like moving and shit like that. So, um, on a brighter note. The basement is pretty much hollowed out for the, with the exception of this small stack of movies that I have. Uh, actually, it's a large stack of movies, but compared to everything, uh, it's small. Um, but yeah, so next Tuesday we are going to do, um, we're going to have our, our um, tiling put in or whatever in the basement. And um, so hopefully by the end of next week I can start moving um, my stuff back and then maybe figure out a game plan for how I can um, do a, a, do a righteous presentation of my films because, um, you know, just obviously you guys know I've had my shit everywhere in the past. So we'll see, but I hope everybody's doing well. Um, hope everybody's, um, you know, just hanging in there and, and, uh, doing well. I know it's only been a week, but, um, it feels like a long time. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get into this update. There's a ton of stuff here, um, a ton of stuff. So don't think for a second because I haven't been doing videos um, as frequently. I haven't been getting as much stuff uh, because you'll see there's no shortage of that. All right, so let's start with the DVDs. I have uh, a few DVDs and then we'll go from, from there. Um, all right, so first up is a title that I got from Umbrella. I'm pretty sure you can get this in the US as well, but uh, Art of the Dead. Don't know much about it. Uh, modern, uh, probably like an indie horror movie. Um, Tara Reed's in it, that's interesting. Um, haven't really heard anybody talk about it, so I don't know much about it, but uh, seven paintings um, are purchased by this um, gentleman <laughs> a wealthy gentleman and um and uh i guess these paintings are deadly so we'll see art of the dead uh then we have fang boner um uh mike from grindhouse video tampa shouted this movie out said it was really good really funny really grotesque and good uh you know stuff like that along those lines so yeah at raw wild eye raw and extreme so i wanted to pick this one up fang boner never seen it but love that name uh, then we have Clown of the Dead. I actually blind buy, um, blind buy the shit out of this one just because of the title. I thought it looked, um, excuse me, really creepy. Love clowns, love zombie movies, so figured it might be a combination of the two. But unfortunately, I heard this movie's horrible. So uh, yeah, it's Wild Eye, newer Wild Eye release. But I could be wrong. I could be pleasantly surprised. Probably not, but we'll see. Um, then I grabbed the Field Guide of. Uh, to horror evil rather um, I actually watched this the other night I liked it I thought it was really good it's got a pretty good short from the director of Baskin it's all like foreign directors pretty much I think uh, but some really really creepy visuals in this and um, I liked it I thought it was really good so if you like anthology films kind of crazy anthology films uh, creepy anthology films check this one out it was good uh, then I grabbed Haunt for some reason these Eli Roth um Direct to DVD features or direct to home video uh, always start out on DVD. It seems there was another one too. Um, I can't remember that Eli Roth presented that came out on DVD only. Eventually, it'll probably get a Blu-ray release. But uh, I'll clown. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, I heard this was good. My brother checked this out. I haven't seen it yet, but Haunt. Stoked on that. I gotta kind of burn through things here because I do have a ton of stuff. Um, I wanted to show you guys something else, but I think I put it in storage already. Uh, yeah, unfortunately I, I did. Fuck. Um, all right, well, maybe we'll do another video for, for that. I got some cool pins and stuff. Um, all right, so let's go into the random Blu-rays pile. Uh, so first up we have Alien Predators. Uh, just a fun 80s monster sci-fi horror movie, I guess. Uh, Scream Factory put this out as well, so... Yeah, um, no real reason why I needed to pick this up, but sometimes these cover artworks um, and these black cases from Amazon.co.uk, plus the price being good, plus the, the movie being good, um, warrants the double dip once in a while. 
Uh, then I got kind of a weird thing. Uh, I ordered a movie from Todd Sheets. And I want to say this happened both times that I've ordered directly from him. So Cloud NATO uh, Indiegogo campaign came and went a little while ago. And I was trying to get a copy of the Blu-ray of Cloud NATO. So um, I hit up, I guess, what was ultimately Todd Sheets, who's the director of the movie. And, um, and it didn't come. And then I contacted him and he was like, yeah, I don't know. It's stuck in the USPS. Let's wait, see what happens. I'm working on it. Uh, if I can't um, figure it out, I'll send you out a new one. So long story short, a few weeks went by, nothing happened. He sent me out uh, the movie and he sent me Bone Hill Road. And coincidentally, I think this is the only other movie I've ever bought directly from Todd Sheets. And I, had, I remember having issues with this one taking a while to come too. Um, nothing against these indie directors, but like, for some reason, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I, I guess it doesn't, there's no sense in pinning them together. I had an issue with, um, the director of, uh, Night of the Tentacles or Heart Attack or whatever, uh, Apple Cart, um, Kill That Bitch, I forget his name now, but. Uh, like, it seems like a lot of times when I order from these indie directors directly, it takes forever to get my stuff. Then there's always some sort of issue that it doesn't come and then they end up sending it out again. It happens a lot with indie director filmmakers. Uh, and it's just weird because as a small business owner, you know, it's like I, I take a personal priority to cater to the customers, you know, get their stuff out as soon as humanly possible, send them tracking and just go above and beyond, um, that sort of thing. But they could be really busy, whatever, um, whatever it is. But anyway, so he sent me Bone Hill Road. I didn't even, at this point, I didn't even honestly contact him uh, because I had read some reviews and I heard Clown Nato sucks balls anyway. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. By the time I get the goddamn movie, I'll be dead. Um, so yeah, I just, whatever. I got an extra copy of Bone Hill Road. Um, signature on it too. So if anybody, this one was pretty good. I actually didn't mind this movie. It was, it was fun. Good practical uh, werewolf sequences and stuff like that. Uh, it was okay. Uh, so anyways, I have an extra copy of this. Um, and that reminds me, I have a ton of stuff that I've uh, double dipped on recently. I've got movies for sale. I'll do a separate video for that because there's a lot of stuff. A lot of really good stuff. Uh, new titles. I have like Parasite, Two Evil Eyes, um, American Werewolf in London, Limited Edition, uh, Baby Blood. I got a bunch of new Kino, Arrow... Um, all the good companies, uh, doubles. So, uh, speaking of which, I have an extra copy of this as well. Um, and Manson Family Murders. Ironically, again, Cult Epics, not a director, but, uh, and the guy's really nice from Cult Epics, I'm not gonna lie, Nico. Um, I've ordered directly from him a bunch of times. Few times I've ordered from him, same issue. Movies don't get sent out. Uh, when they finally do, there's an issue with the tracking. I'm not able to track it. I don't even think Nico sends tracking numbers. At least I didn't get one for this. But, uh, yeah, I had ordered these, uh, this and the Necromantic limited edition, uh, box set or whatever, uh, from directly from Cult Epics and they never came. So I contacted Nico, he made it right and they came and I actually got what I ordered. So all is good there. Uh, but I did grab another copy of this. So if anybody wants the, um, bonus Sharon Tate home movies, Two disc limited edition of the Manson Family movies with a slipcover. It's DVD only. This was only released as DVD. I think there's only like a thousand of these made. So uh, I have an extra copy of this if anybody's interested. Um, and then I grabbed some stuff from these are random DVDs. So uh, Warner Archive. Uh, I ordered the Popeye. I ordered I obviously the Sailor. Uh, this is the Volume Three, the 40s. Um, so yeah, they have series one, two, and three now, volumes one, two, and three of Popeye the Sailor, man. So I'm stoked. I have a little childhood connection with Popeye, so someday I will revisit those for sure. Um, and then I grab Satanic Panic. Heard kind of mixed things on this one as well. Want to check it out though. I love anything possessed. Um, so some, some, uh, Satanic demon witches or whatever in this, I don't know, uh, something crazy. But uh, the pizza delivery driver, um, turns out she delivers a bunch of, uh, well, a bunch of satanic ritualists order a pizza because they need a specific person for the ritual. And uh, so kind of like a horror comedy, I think. Sounded pretty fun, though. And then I grabbed this. 
uh, the human monster. Most of this stuff too, by the way, just so you know, comes from Grindhouse Video Tampa and Diabolic DVD. Uh, but they have, I have a bunch of stuff, so I'll let you know. The human monster, uh, old Bella Lugosi, VCI Entertainment Blu-ray release. Got to support VCI because uh, they put out some really obscure stuff. Few and far between, but that's okay. They still put out goodness. So, uh, yeah, based on Dark Eyes of London by Edgar Wallace, we have The Human Monster. And this movie is from a long time ago. Of course, they don't tell me the year, so that sucks. Um, I hate that, but yeah. Um, it says Bela Lugosi gives one of his finest portraits of evil in his adaptation of Edgar Wallace's terror thriller mystery The Dark Eyes of London a series of drownings have Scotland Yard baffled one common denominator the dead men were heavily insur insured through a particular brokerage firm and all the policies were paid off uh, so some sort of whodunit mystery murder um, English old school uh Murder mystery. So that's awesome. The human monster, maybe. Or could it be something more monstrous is the killer? We don't know. But you'll have to find out. And um, if I would have read you the rest of the synopsis, we may have found out. But I don't have time for that, so sorry. Uh, this is one from SRS, uh, Sabrosa Studios, Necrologies. Every once in a while, something will catch my eye from SRS. A lot of the really bootleg Polonia Brothers stuff I kind of stay away from. I'm not a biggest fan of shot on video stuff, as I've said before. But... Um, I love anthologies, so and I like indie stuff too, especially when it's good. Like I love uh, How Shark was really good. Um, what was the other one they put out? Uh, Night of the something. Uh, it was really creepy or really fun. Good practical effects. Uh, some of the stuff they put out is good. So I wanted to take a stat, take a chance on this one. Necrologies. Uh, one night, a horror movie fan sneaks into a graveyard. He's caught by a strange gravekeeper. Uh, the young man tries to talk to him to gain some time before he calls the police. The keeper shows him his book of tombs and tells him the most bizarre and frightening stories from the book uh, that are linked to the tomb. So that's awesome. You get six macabre stories filled with evil creatures and unearthly events. And it is uh, starring, co-starring Jean-Claude Dreyfus, uh, who was in uh, City of Lost Children, and Scream Queen Linnea Quigley makes a um, appearance in this movie as well. So don't know much about it, but if you guys know anything about it, let me know. Then we have Plagueers. This is a Wild Eye Blu-ray. Don't know much about it. Steve Railsback. Um, zombie sci-fi horror, basically. Mutant uh, zombies crash down on Earth. And uh, it's basically like, um, you know, a battle between, I think, mankind and the Plagueers. So, sounds good. Looks like some good practical effects. It's 10, year, 10 years old. So, it's, it's that, um, you know, good good old cheesy CGI era there. Uh, all right, now we have, let me see. Um, all right, so this is really cool. And actually, shout out to PMAC, PMAC Movies. Uh, some of you guys may know Mr. PMAC. Um, he is a movie collector like myself, friend of mine. And he um, sent me this, and he was like, do you have it? And I was like, no, I don't. Maybe I told him I did. I don't know. But I didn't, and I ordered it. Um, because even though I own all these movies, I wanted the convenience and my brother, when I told my brother this, he's like, you're ridiculous, dude. You're crazy. You're stupid. You're insane. But um, this is just like a really cool box set where I have all of these movies. Uh, Fear in the Night, Straight On Till Morning, Demons of the Mind, great one. Uh, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb, Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde, Scars of Dracula and Horror of Frankenstein. Um, all on little slim disc Blu-ray cases individually. Because I have the... Double play hammer uh, line. I think it's Studio Canal hammer double play releases where you get the slip cover and whatnot. So to have all these in one little skinny box set, these are definitely good viewing copies. Um, and they're all in the same place and they're all kind of similar genre, uh, similar production company, you know, similar feel, hammer horror, good stuff. So uh, I'm stoked to have this beautiful box set and the price was right too. So shout out to PMAC for bringing that one to my attention. Awesome. Uh, seven Blu-ray set. All right, now I hope you guys can't see. Eh, whatever. But <laughs> all right, Scream Factory, The Devil Rides Out. Awesome. Uh, Scream Factory had an amazing year, 2019, so far, and it's not over yet. We still got a ton of good stuff coming. But I love these old school Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, Hammer, English, Amicus. Uh, you know, satanic, ritualistic 
uh, horror movies with that great, like, nostalgic, old-school vibe feel. So just another one, uh, The Devil Rides Out. Um, yes, so that's cool. Uh, there's some uh, features on this. New 2K scan, new audio commentary, uh, new Satanic Shocks film historian Kim Newman recalls The Devil Rides Out, new folk horror. Goes haywire. This is like uh, OG folk horror, but um, yeah, so some good stuff here. Uh, audio commentaries with Christopher Lee and Sarah Lawson. Black Magic: The Making of Devils uh, Rides Out. So really nice release, actually. This is like collector's edition material, and it's not even a collector's edition. So that's dope. Then we have uh, the Blob. Love this movie. Great movie. Uh, finally getting a really really nice release from Scream Factory. I do like that newly commissioned cover artwork. I think it's pretty pretty rad. Um, and yeah, this movie is just a lot of fun. One, one of the better horror remakes, I think, um, ever, really. It's just great. If you love The Blob, check it out. I'm sure most of you guys have seen this one. But uh, new audio commentary with director Chuck Russell, cinematographer Mike Irwin, uh, special makeup artists moderated by Joe, Joe Lynch. Awesome. Lynch, rather. Uh, new audio, So new audio commentaries, tons of them from actors, actors, producers, uh, fans, and everything. And then we get um, new interviews with... Production designers, effects artists, so tons of new stuff on this one. Behind the scenes footage, audio commentary tracks, all goodness here. So that's super rad, awesome, love that. The Blob. I feel like I had something else too uh, from Scream Factory that I put away over there, but I'm not gonna, I don't know, I'm not gonna go over there right now. Um, all right, so some stuff from Scorpion. We have Nana, not really sure what this movie's about, to be perfectly honest, um, but uh she's the demon of paris men lavish their wealth and attention to her but her appetites are insatiable she risks everything for pleasure leaving a trail of broken hearts as she revels in the ecstasy of forbidden love also starring so hmm, some demon sexy demon by the name of nana or nana so that's cool it's from 1983 then we have this one really excited to check this out deep space some good old late 80s sci-fi uh Space horror, I guess you could say. Uh, deep space horror. Fred Olin Ray directed this. Love Fred Olin Ray. So um, this will be exciting. Uh, really fun to watch. Orient Pictures. This is great. So um, yeah, awesome. Love it. Then we have one from um, Dork Farce, I believe. Uh, Karen Black and uh, Rainbow Harvest. Mirror. Is it Mirror, Mirror, or Mirror? Uh, a Reflection of Pure Terror. I just really wanted to see this movie i've never seen it before a while ago they put out the second one i believe so it's nice to have them both now um and their blu-ray or i mean their amazing slip covers that should be displayed next to rolex watches are slowly but surely kind of declining i think in um in um fanciness i guess you could say there's no uh glow in the dark there's no whatever the word is bulging of the cardboard uh none of that here so just a regular slip cover um just a regular overpriced code red dvd but you get a slip cover so that makes it all worth it right but i'm psyched that's a good release i'm sure really want to check it out mirror mirror it's from a while ago 1990 awesome love it all right, now we get into a few Mill Creek titles. Um, Ultraman and Ultra Q. I can't say I'm the biggest fan of these type of movies, but I swooped them up. The price, they are getting a little bit more expensive. I will say that. They're not 10 bucks anymore, guys. Uh, but number one and two from this line of classic series that started it all. I don't know what this is, really. Um, it's just... Oh, it's the Series 2 and Series 1, uh, I guess the Ultra Q. I think there's three or four of these movies total, but they're directed by, I believe, the director of Godzilla. I could be wrong about that. Um, but anyways, awesome, cool, nice to have. Really heavy duty. You've got the Steelbook plus the, for Mill Creek too, it's like, these are like more, these are nicer than Scream Factory Steelbooks. And they've got that like plastic um, coating over the Steelbooks to keep them nice. And then, yeah, I'm a little bit insane. I grabbed these two. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. Don't even ask. Just call me ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited to check those out. Alrighty. Then we have the Lone Criterion. Oh, no. That's, I lied. Uh, Criterion Collection. 
release of Hexen. I love this movie. Uh, I think, uh, oh God, I think maybe it was Moods who first told me about this movie, but it's really good. If you like witchcraft and the history of witchcraft and just s silent, uh, old, just really good witchcraft type movie. Uh, it's old and silent and, and it's just creepy. And I like it. It's a good bedtime movie for sure. So if you're interested in learning about that sort of thing, uh, Haxon finally comes to Blu-ray. So I can retire that uh, DVD from Criterion Collection as well. All right, uh, let's see. Let's get into a couple of these stragglers here. So we've got this one. I'm really excited for this. Night Sitter. Um, artist poses at a babysitter to steal a wealthy occult enthusiast. One, one of the something she's sitting unwittingly summons a trio of witches known as Three Mothers. So I'm not sure. I couldn't really read it all, but it says the visual style of Dario Argento is omnipresent with the use of intense, vivid lighting. I haven't heard anything about this movie, so if you guys know anything about it, let me know. The Night Sitter. Had to grab that, though. And then this one is from Nucleus. Ghost Story, not to be confused with all the other ghost stories. This is a newer one. Uh, Stephen Weeks, Dreamlike Chiller, is the absolute definition of cult British horror. Set in 1930s. Uh, England, it tells the story of three former public schoolmates, Larry Dean, sorry, Larry Dan, Murray Melvin, and the enig enigmatic Vivian McCarroll. McCarroll. Um, blah, blah, blah. Seen here. Blah, 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 blah. Who reunite in a country mansion haunted by the spirit of insane former resident Marian Faithful. The haunting transport us to a surreal world of incest and murder inhabited by a demonic doll and a, and a sadistic doctor who presides over a corrupt, insane asylum. With Barbara Shelley, Lee Lawson, so I apologize, this is old, uh, co combines, uh, maybe I'm wrong, successfully combining 1970s horror with 1930s charm and released perfectly by Weeks, with a soundtrack by Pink Floyd collaborator Ron Jessen, Ghost Story has been beautifully restored and is packed with bonus features for this high-definition world premiere. So I'm not sure what year it is, it says 2019, but it's from 1974. Alright, so... My apologies, guys. Is this... This is not Ghost Story. The one that takes place in Montpelier, Vermont. No, it can't be. Um, but, yeah. So, I don't know. If anybody's seen this, let me know your thoughts. Could be a real gem we stumbled upon there. Then we have Borley Rectory. Uh, really excited for this one as well. Um, for fans of the supernatural, Borley Rectory is a must-see. Daily Mirror journalist V.C. Wall calls upon the services of famed paranormal investigator Harry Price to investigate supernatural goings-on of Victorian mansion in Essex. Uh, little does he realize that he will set into motion a story that will fascinate and confound the world. Boiler Rectory is a true story of Price's investigation and the legends that come to haunt all those involved. It's an animated documentary chronicling, chronicling sorry, what came to be known as the most haunted house in England. The legend attached to the rectory and famed paranormal investigator Harry Price's subsequent investigations of them caught the public's imagination during the 1930s in a time becoming of the world's most notorious ghost stories and influencing Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House and Richard Matheson's Hell House. So that's awesome. Gotta check this one out. It's chock full of um, quotes and stuff like that. So really excited. A little confused too. I don't know quite what to expect from that one, but... Then we have a new one from BFI. We have Legend, Legend of the Witches and Secret Rites, a film by Derek Ford. An eye-opening exploration of the occult, Malcolm Lee's X-rated quasi-documentary Legend of the Witches is an imaginative depiction of pagan rituals as they were supposedly practiced at the dawn of the downer decade. Uh, sharing the secrets of initiation into a coven, divination, ritual scrying, the casting of Death's Bell, and a chilling black mass. It also visits Bolse Castle's Incredible Museum of Witchcraft. So, sounds like this should be paired with Haxon for a beautiful double feature. Um, so that's awesome. Two great companies, too. You've got American Criterion and uh, BFI. So, right? England, right? Europe. Yes. So, the two titans come together for an amazing world of witchcraft from different eras. So that's awesome. All right. I'm... I'm at 25 minutes. We'll go. We'll get. We'll get through the kinos. No, we'll get through the uh, 88 films, and then we will pause this, and we'll do the rest uh, another time. Because I still have a bunch to show you, but I'm getting tired. So, all right.
So I just have three titles here from 88 Films. Uh, the first one being Karate Warrior. Uh, don't know much about it, but it is from... it's. Um, I think it's Italian. Um, and it is from... The 80s, I think, or the 70s. I hate that. They give you the... They always give you the damn year that it was released, but never the year it was made. But anyways, I don't know. Karate Warrior, not my forte, but it looks like some 80s or 90s um, karate ripoff movie type thing. Anthony Scott heads to Manila for a chance to reconnect with his father. But as soon as he lands in the sweltering heat of the Philippines, Anthony swiftly finds himself on the wrong side of Quino, a local gangster who also happens to be a badass karate champion. After a royal smackdown, Anthony vows to get his revenge and seeks the help of the mysterious master Kumura, the man responsible for blah, 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 blah. So yeah, cheesy uh, karate movie. And then we have a campaign that 88 Films did. Um, these are kind of weird movies, but they're like sexploitation, uh, Italian stuff. And um, I know people have been having issues with these. Uh, people who participated 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 in the campaign didn't get slip covers with their releases so that sucks um luckily i got them with mine so i'm gonna keep these sealed for now but just some weird stuff honestly i kind of wish that ada films would stick with their um italian horror their asian horror stuff like that even westerns but when they get into the sleazy sexploitation stuff that doesn't even really have anything to do with horror maybe a little bit of suspense that's not really my bag so i don't know but uh we have beatrice sensi i guess kind of a story of um of um romeo and juliet similar to that forbidden lovers type deal and then we have 11 days and 11 nights which is uh sexploitation uh from 1987 one of the biggest blockbusters from the late day era of Rome based sleaze so some sleazy stuff I guess so if you're into the sleaze uh you can grab these from 88 films and these were pretty cool like I guess well they obviously had to do a campaign to restore these films because there's not a lot of I guess want for them so I was happy to participate support 88 films and I'm just happy my stuff came so as it should have uh but anyways yeah, that's it. So we're going to take a break. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, and I will catch you fairly soon. Um, going to be a little hectic in the upcoming week with moving and shit like that. So uh, soon. But I'll be back soon with another one. All right. Talk to you later. Peace.